Hey, it's Mike here, and today we're back at it again, this time with Raw Alignment, only hours after I released my Raw Vana video, Raw Alignment came out and said she's not vegan, she no longer eats a plant-based diet. Just listening to my intuitive pull of like, salmon. I wasn't excited to do another one of these videos, but there's just one idea, one topic here that is just so over the top, and she has so many outrageous claims about, that I just, I had to do it. And that idea that she's already spread to 300,000 people, a lot of which are probably very impressionable, is the magical instant cure-all potential of fish. And so we are going to take a critical look at her claims with some research, you know, and see if it's biochemically possible to get the results that she got, or if it was just placebo, because it appears that raw alignment is now wrong alignment. Can we just delete that? No? All right. Let's do this. I think a good place to start here is a disclaimer out of her own mouth, although it, it comes in around 29 minutes in her video. Here she is. I am still learning that this is just my personal experience and I am not a professional. This has merely been a diary of my life experience. Her channel isn't about science or talking about doctor's recommendations very often. It's more of a video diary and probably more importantly here. This has never been a vegan activism channel. So while it appears that she ate a fully plant-based diet, it's unclear to what extent she ever made the ethical connection there. And it, it didn't seem to be a very deep one because there's no other excuse for her landsliding down from eating fish all of a sudden to eating cows, as you will soon see. Of course, she mentions how she started off with a good experience eating a vegan diet. When I went vegan, everything changed. Like veganism enhanced and in a way saved my life in, in so many different aspects. And so to consider eating something that wasn't vegan to me wasn't even an option. And then as time went on, she had a sort of unique non-dietary set of issues that she described as environmental triggers, particularly from mold, here she is. Symptoms that were a result of my external environment, uh, which had toxic mold in it. Migraine headaches, chronic sinus congestion, essentially I like could not breathe out of my nose at all. Brain fog, memory loss, extreme appetite loss, inability to articulate myself. Mental issues don't appear to be a common reaction to mold. Usually it's more respiratory, but you know, we're seeing from studies like this that there are some potential neurological effects. And from this study, some cognitive effects in children who are exposed really early. So let's give her the benefit of the doubt, but it seems that those are not connected to diet, although she thinks there is some degree of connection. I started to realize that my internal environment, the, the food that I consumed, could kind of turn on or turn off the intensity of these symptoms. So the first time around, she went from her moldy Hawaiian climate over to a dry Colorado climate and felt better. Within a couple of days, my sinuses and my like head pressure and face pressure and congestion was less intense. Basically right after that, I dove into a vegan mold diet and supplement protocol, which also improved the way that I was feeling quite quickly. I have no idea what a vegan mold protocol is, but she said her levels were good. I don't know what levels they were. If she saw a doctor, who knows, missing details, but she said she felt good enough to go back to Hawaii. Like everything was looking better. So I was like, I'm, I'm good to go. Like I'm going back to Hawaii. In Hawaii, her issues come back again. She says brain fog, maybe some memory issues, not feeling herself, actually not herself-itis, a real disease. And this part was a little fuzzy, but it seemed that not feeling good in Hawaii again, she eventually went back to Colorado in a dry climate again. And then on the peak of a full blood moon, she stands there dagger in hand and eats a fish. No, I think it was probably actually like a restaurant or something. I tried salmon, I had eight ounces of salmon one night, and I, this was just like a couple nights after getting back from Hawaii, so I was still like, I had all my symptoms going on. But the next morning, she is cured of every possible issue that she's ever had in her life. And I woke up the next morning with zero congestion, and zero brain fog, zero migraine, zero lack of clarity, I felt the best that I had in <laughs> probably like three years. And correct me if I'm wrong here, but last time she went from that humid Hawaiian climate to dry Colorado, the issue fixed itself naturally. This time she did that, but then had some fish also. It's all the fish this time though, it's all the fish. The first time it didn't fix all of her life problems, that's the difference. All right, so what is the magical ingredient that she points to? DHA. Is that salmon is extremely high in omega-3s, but more specifically EPA and DHA. 
Talked about this before, you're probably familiar with DHA, which is a long chain amino fatty acid, which our body converts from ALA, the plant-based form of omega-3s. She blames a vegan diet because she says that we can only convert such a small percentage of that plant-based ALA to that long chain DHA. But only a very, very small percentage is actually converted. So it's not very efficient. It's something like one or two or 3%. I just, I wasn't getting that conversion that I needed to in order to power my brain and to heal my brain. As for that 1% from this study, DHA conversion measurements may be inaccurately low, and it's worth noting that some have recorded as high as 9%. And I do wanna say, I think vegans should be aware of DHA. It's probably nutrient number two right behind B12. But I wanna talk about this study real quick. Firstly, in the sentence, I might as well say it because they mention it, that animals who are fed just ALA-rich diets have about the same levels of DHA as the animals fed a DHA-rich diet. But the main point, quote, the brain DHA requirement is estimated to be only 2.4 to 3.8 milligrams per day in humans. So what plant foods have omegas? Well, you have that flax, that chia, you've got walnuts and hemp, and even canola is a decent source of ALA. One ounce of chia is 5,000 milligrams of ALA. At that lower 1% conversion rate, that's 50 milligrams of DHA, or 15 to 20 times the brain requirement. At the highest 9% conversion rate, it would be 450 milligrams of DHA. An ounce of walnuts gets you way over the brain requirement at 1% conversion. I also love how no one seems to be concerned about vegetarians and DHA. Vegetarians eat the same amount of fish as vegans, which is zero, possibly because they're partaking in animal products, they're less emotionally triggering. But from this study on them, it appears that the conversion rate of ALA actually goes up when you don't eat fish. So vegetarians had higher levels of ALA conversion to DHA. Most importantly from this study, there doesn't appear to be a trend of adverse effects from not eating fish DHA in vegans and vegetarians. And that's a lot of studies backing that claim. And it's unclear whether or not she was eating enough omega-3s from the YouTube comments, which are a gold standard of information, it appears that she had a pretty restricted, limited diet. She never talked about just trying to achieve a balanced vegan diet, focusing on meeting all of her nutritional needs. No, something more restrictive sounding like a mold diet. No idea what that is, but why rely on conversion? More importantly, why resort to eating fish when you can simply take a vegan algae DHA capsule? with actual DHA in it. This is where the fish get it from. They get it from the algae. And she said, she said she would try anything. I will try anything right now. Except an algae pill because hashtag intuition. Just listening to my intuitive pull of like salmon, salmon. I rest my case. Oh wait, I, I still have things to say. This is why it's good to at least hear the case of what vegan doctors recommend. I mean, Dr. Gregor recommends dietary sources of ALA and taking a DHA capsule. However, taking DHA can get you that extra brain structure preservation as one enters old age. And a lot of doctors recommend that, but, but it gets steamier. Another massive change, a massive benefit for me has been that I have a sex drive now. I literally have never had a sex drive in my life. I'm just so, uh, oh, this microphone is looking pretty, oh, you don't feel the same way? And there's nothing wrong with being sexual, but this is a problem that she said she had her whole life. When she ate fish before, she still had this problem, but now it's fixing everything. And remember, we're looking at a magical overnight reduction of all symptoms. And we have to ask, is that even biochemically possible? First of all, it's unlikely that the blood status of a single nutrient is gonna actually change that much after a single meal. Second of all, these are systemic issues that she claims to have, but it makes sense because she seems to be under the impression that DHA is actually a type of fuel within the brain. EPA and DHA, which are what power your brain. I wasn't getting that conversion that I needed to in order to power my brain. And but the reality is that it plays more of a structural role. So we'd have to have the change in blood levels and then they'd have to be high enough for long enough for your body to actually make structural changes in your brain. So how long would it actually take to make changes like this in the system? Uh, it doesn't really matter because definitely absolutely not in eight hours after a night's sleep. And that's why I can't help but wonder if that perceived immediate response to that single meal was placebo in nature. Placebo is how a notion alone can have a real world effects and it is a very powerful phenomenon. Different color pills can have different effects. A yellow pill will be stimulating and a blue pill has been shown to be sedative, yet 
they're both sugar. From this study, cupping, you might've seen it in the Olympics, was just as effective as fake cupping. And while a placebo salt water injection didn't reduce pain as much as morphine, it still reduced pain. And the magnitude of a placebo's power, the suggestibility effect is dependent on the source it's from. And one of the highest source is trusted people such as friends or family. And a lot of my friends from Hawaii were sharing with me that they had recently changed their diet and within a few days or a couple of weeks max, they were experiencing insane positive transformation with all sorts of different health struggles like digestive stuff, brain stuff, uh, memory, um, like physical rashes. So she had that notion, that suggestibility planted by her trusted friends that fish was a cure-all. It cured all sorts of ailments. So she had the notion, consumed the placebo, and furthermore, had the effect that she believed she was going to have. And in addition, it's worth noting that a larger positive shift in mood can have physical effects as well. If you're telling yourself, everything will be better now, everything will be better now, there's a good chance that it will be. And frankly, especially if it's the type of issues that she had, we're not talking about like broken bones or anything like that. We're talking about more subjective experiences like those that she was having of brain fog and memory issues. Except for one, which would be the exception, she claims that she quickly grew muscle and lost fat. Um, muscle gain and fat loss has been like unreal. My body changed like so quickly. But speaking to a positive shift in mood, I mean, she looks more or less the same to me. It's possible that she just views herself more positively and goes, wow, I've, my body's changed. You know, she didn't get a DEXA scan and moving backwards, she never got her DHA levels checked. Otherwise she would have mentioned it. And I don't even know how many doctors she even saw throughout this whole thing. Who knows? We know nothing. And next point, none of the issues that she had in any way justified sliding further down the meat hole and eating cows. I also want to note that I'm not supporting factory farming. Everything that I have been consuming is grass fed, wild caught, pasture raised, organic, and locally sourced when possible. Ah, oh, I love that caveat, when possible, which means when you ever catch me out eating random crap, don't blame me. Have you seen the footage of quote, humane farms in pasture raised and free? It's all brutal, just Google it. Red meat is carcinogenic no matter how it was raised. It has that heme iron, it's a class 2A carcinogen. And chances are that grass fed beef was actually finished in a feedlot. And finally, doesn't matter where the animal was raised, they don't wanna die. We're talking about a highly sentient animal being sent to the same slaughterhouse, but but biohacking. The concept of changing my external environment and my internal environment in order to enhance my health. Something called biohacking that I've just been like so passionate about. Biohacking, it's when you pay somebody to hack animals in half and then you eat them. Stare into my ring light eyes. And I love the wild caught stuff. First of all, fish are sentient as well, but our oceans just can't handle fishing on the scale that we have it at all. It destroys super biodiverse coral reefs, fish populations collapse. And anyway, as I recently mentioned from this report, 20% of fish are mislabeled globally, but, but it gets worse for salmon, which is the fish that she ate 43% were mislabeled. That's not only farm raised salmon being labeled as wild caught salmon. Wild caught salmon, look into my ring light eyes. But it can also be entirely different species of fish labeled as salmon. Did she even eat salmon at all? For all we know, she ate the nose off of an ugly fish. 43% chance. Just say it. Point is, there are fish that aren't even high in DHA that she could have been eating. She could have been eating high mercury or high persistent organic pollutant fish, which are very widespread even when wild caught. We don't even know if the labels were right. Anyway, let's move on. So some of the things that I have been dabbling in and have been things like plant medicine, Kangen water, red light therapy, meditation, breath work. You can look forward to an amazing future on her channel that she's really excited about, which will feature things such as Kangen water, a type of alkaline water. That's what Ravana drank a lot. Watch my video on her for that full story, but we can expect in, you know, a couple months, maybe a low stomach acid SIBO video from her. But at least it won't be because she was vegan. In the end, the most important point here is that the changes that she perceived were too widespread and sweeping and immediate to be biochemically possible. And that's why I had to make the case for them being placebo. It's unclear what 
actual medical doctor she went to, if any. We never saw her DHA level. She never even mentioned an official diagnosis for mold exposure to my knowledge. And for all these reasons, it's clear that the video that she made is not being received well. More dislikes than likes, and the comments are just one after another, not in support of her. Negative, boom, 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 boom. People aren't buying it. And so I hope that she's the end of a trend of these plant-based or vegan YouTubers going off the wagon. Again, the global trend is an increased interest in veganism. And back to the DHA point, you don't have to eat animals to get it. You can get it within the realm of a vegan diet. And if you're thinking about eating fish because of videos like this, I urge you to just try going through a bottle of DHA capsules. Yeah, they're a bit more expensive as far as supplements go, but fish is definitely more expensive than that, especially when you're buying all this wild caught high grade, make you feel good about it fish. Oh my God, I didn't even mention the increased methane from grass fed beef. Ugh just never ends. All right, that's it for today. Feel free to let me know what you think down below. Eat some of those omega-3s. Feel free to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video, which will not be about people eating fish.